Will Dawkins is playing chess, not checkers. Jonas Valanciunas is expected to be traded before or at the trade deadline this upcoming season. I know a lot of us are not surprised, but let's talk about it and more next on Locked On Wizards. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Scott, again. I appreciate you guys making Locked On Wizards your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. And tonight's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On. NBA for $20 off your first purchase. And of course, terms apply. And again, everybody, appreciate you guys uh, waiting for me. Uh, definitely coming back from vacation, feeling refreshed, ready to roll, ready to uh, hit the ground running, man. So let's get into the latest news in Wizards land. Jonas Valanciunas. Uh, report came out that Jonas Valanciunas will be traded to, a, you know, looking at a couple of suitors, but he will be traded at some point, whether if it's before or at the trade deadline this upcoming season. We're going to look at is it Cooper Flag a bust next year or next year, or is Ace Bailey have something to say about that? And we're going to look at Bilal Kulabali's uh, stat line for uh, the Olympics real quick and then call it the night. So let's get into it, everybody. I hope everybody had a blessed weekend. Like I said, I, I had a much needed vacation, man. So I'm definitely coming back, ready to roll, ready to work, uh, feeling refreshed and ready to go. So let's get into it, everybody. So there's a report, and um, this is per Yard Barker, um, and it is um, also through US Today Sports, and it says, a uh, report says many around the NBA believe that Jonas Valanciunas was signed by the Wizards just to be traded. Uh, and obviously, this was actually originally posted by Whoops Hire, uh, Hoops Wire. My bad. Um, so, looking at the report, real quick, quote unquote, according to NBA insider Sean Davini of Heavy Sports, many people around the NBA believe Jonas Valanciunas was signed by the Washington Wizards just to be traded. Not really a shocker, right? Uh, Valanciunas signed a three-year, thirty-point-three million-dollar contract with the Wizards this offseason as part of a signing tra- trade deal. With the New Orleans Pelicans, this is uh, quote unquote. It was really smart deal for Valanciunas because it got him paid at the time when there were just not that many spots available. It's musical chairs, and if you do not get one of the first slots now with the new rules, you're screwed. One NBA exec said. So looking at that report, first of all, I don't think anybody's surprised. If you look at Jonas Valanciunas, you look at Michael Brogdon, you look at Kyle Kuzma. We'll see about Jordan Poole. Um, could he be his future piece? Could be. Could it be a trade commodity? Could be. But I think that one of the first dominoes to fall, if not. Malcolm Brogdon would definitely be Jonas Valanciunas because, you know, the LA Lakers were heavily looking at him. Uh, the New York Knicks have a need at the center position, you know, whether they're a starter in depth. And so, he, you know, I, I believe that Will Dawkins shows time and time again that adults are in the building in the front office in Washington, D.C., man, because he is playing chess, not checkers, man. And this is a good move. He got him on the cheap, and he plucked him from the free agent market knowing that he had – heavy interest on him and that he's going to be able to, there's a high chance that he's going to be able to flip him. Now, yeah, he's 32 years old. Yes. He could be on, you know, starting to decline. Now the question is how much does he decline? You know, how much does his skill set decline? You know, you know, obviously he's still that three and D a guy who is a rim protector, a guy who can straight on spread the floor, shoot from behind three point range. So he's a guy who can definitely fit the mold of the modern day NBA center. He can still provide quality minutes for the NBA team, whether it's in DC or anywhere else. So I think that again, a lot of us aren't surprised. We knew that we, when they signed him, yes, they said he's going to be a mentor. And I think, yes, he is definitely going to be a mentor to Alex Sarr, to Marvin Bagley, who's still a young player, um, and Tristan Vucevic, especially, you know, being a fellow European player. So, but you know he's got suitors. The L.A. Lakers are trying to make moves, man. LeBron James is not getting younger. So, obviously, they have to add more pieces, in my opinion, to compete in a very, very competitive Western Conference, man, where they very easily could be fighting for playing. So, they, you know, LeBron James wants to add another ring or two to his legacy, get all that. So I think that that could be a really, really good potential suitor. Now, we look, you know, previous uh, episodes, we looked at, you know, there's a pick situation. Now, could we get a pick? Yes. Um, We're looking at probably late lottery. I mean, looking at the fact that they want to compete. Now, even if they're a playoff, you know, a playing team, you're looking at around the middle, later of the you know lolly but you can still get a first round pick and i think that for a team like the washington wizards who is gm by will Dawkins, who his example is the oklahoma city thunder and what do they do they accumulate draft picks like nothing sam Presti is notoriously known for stacking draft picks man um they, they acquire young talent and they acquire guys in the draft who are versatile 
you saw that with the guys we had, you know, this draft and last year's draft, the you know, Black Club Ali, very versatile. You know, Tristan Vucevic, the four to five. You know, looking at Sar, the four to five. You know, looking at Keyshawn George, the two, the three. I mean, list goes on. You know, Buck Carrington, you know, I mean, dog at point or maybe in two guard because, you know, we're going to talk about in the episode this week, <laughs> kind of give you a sneak peek that could he fit with Jordan Poole long term? They decided to put them in the same backcourt. We're going to explore that, but let's get back into this episode. You know, Jonas Valanciunas. You know, I definitely expect him being moved, and it could be before then. Like, it could be one of the first moves to be made as far as um, because I think that I don't know if he's eligible. I gotta definitely gotta double check. I don't know if it's December fifteenth or January fifteenth, uh, but he's at some point within the first couple of months, if not the first three or four months of the season, man, he's gonna be available for trade. And I think that they should definitely move him. And I think that was the mo for the whole, you know, the whole time. Yeah, he's gonna be able to mentor Alex for a little bit, but from the get, he was meant to be traded. Now. The big question tonight is this. Who's up next? Do you start Rashawn Holmes? You know, I mean, the question is, you know, I mean, is, is he the first domino to veterans being moved? Now, obviously, looking at, you know, if you move Jonas Valachunas, you're, you're obviously looking to move Malcolm Brogdon at some point at the deadline. I, I, you know, I fully expect that if anybody gets traded early in the game, Malcolm Brogdon is the guy. You know what I'm saying? I think he's definitely a guy who could force his way out. Now, not to say he's going to ask for a trade, but um, he's definitely going to be a, the type of player – in this stage of his career, that he's going to want to go to a contender. So I'm not going to say he's going to ask for a trade, but he's going to be a guy to be like, you know, kind of Russell, like Russell Westbrook, say, look, man, kind of want to a contender. You know, I'll mentor as much as I can, but at the deadline, definitely try to get me moved to a contender type of deal. But the list, you know, what, what's next at the center position? Do you start with Sean Holmes? Or do you try to showcase Marvin Bagley the third? Or do you give Tristan Vucevic minutes? Now, obviously, with Sean Holmes, you know, that's a question night for everybody. So definitely comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. You know, if we move on, from Jonas Valanciunas, who is next as starter? Do you do you shop Rashawn Holmes? Do you bring him in and shop him? Or do you start to give minutes to Marvin Bagley and shop him because he's his final contract? Or do you see what you have in Tristan Vucevic? So that's the question for everybody. Um, definitely, because if, you know, if you move on from Kyle Guzman, you know, do you slide somebody? You know, there's a lot of questions, even though I think that Kyle Guzman is, is down the pecking order of guys who might get traded. I think that the most tradable guys in sequence is probably Malcolm Brogdon and then Jonas Valanciunas. Now, Obviously, we all know, you know, Kyle Kuzma has that team-friendly deal that is friendly not only for the Washington Wizards, but it's team-friendly for prospective teams who, again, you know, if they want that scoring punch from a vet who has playoff and championship experience, they don't have to break the bank to do so because he has a very, very sexy contract. So um, I think that, yes, he's tradable, but I think that, you know, there's a lot of factors that say he could be here for a little bit. Same thing with Jordan Poole. But, you know, those Valanciunas, you definitely get assets back because – he has a very team friendly deal, 30 million. But again, the question for everybody is this who takes his spot? Do you prioritize a young player in Tristan Vucevic, or do you try to showcase Sean Holmes, Mark Bagley third? Do you, you know, the question, you know, do you maybe put bags at the four, Kyle Kuzma the three? Because right now we don't know what the starting five is going to be. You know, right now, you know, Brian Keith has not let it known that what his starting five is going to be, who's going to be the two guard, you know, what what's the backcourt going to be? You know, do they put Malcolm Brock at the two? Jordan Poole, I think, is definitely the shoe in to be the guy uh, uh, starting point guard. But who goes to three? Do they put, you know, Kuzma at the three? Do they put bags at the four? You know, there's a lot of possibilities. And I think that, you know, here's the thing with all these veterans and young guys, when you start to see these guys get traded and get moved, you're going to start to become more clear what the long term outlook is. Because, till, you know, you got to get to a point where, you know, a youth movement has to start. Early on, you still prioritize minutes for young guys this year going forward. But, you know, again, you know, Jonas Valanciunas very well could be one of the first dominoes to fall for the Washington Wizards because the Will Dawkins has shown that he is following Oklahoma City. And if you saw Oklahoma City last year, look, that is not a bad example to follow, man. So, like I said, definitely comment below. Let me know what you guys are thinking, man. Um, who's next in the pecking order? You know, what kind of lineup would you like to see? Because me, I would love to see Kyle Kuzma at the three. But then, you know, you have to give some minutes to Bilal Kulabali Sue. You know, and that's, and that's another subject to kind of give you a sneak peek. You know, does Bilal and Alex Starr start, or do they start out in the second unit? That's something we're going to look at this week. So, again, you guys hit the comment section. Let me know who's next in the pecking order. What kind of lineup do you want to see? And if you move on from Jonas Valanciunas, which we're expected to do, who do you want to see as starting center? So we're going to get into some articles about Cooper Flag and Ace Bailey, who it looks like they are competing for the number one overall pick next year. And I know, guys, it is too early to talk about the 2025 draft. But, look. It's all season right now, so I'm trying, I'm trying to get you know talk about as much as I can because it's that quiet period, man. But it, it, definitely, it definitely makes you think, right? So I'm gonna throw some other dynamics at you real quick. But before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by eBay 
Motors. So passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. I'm going to repeat that. Over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You always find exactly what you look for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make the car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So look, keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Thank you for making Lockdown Wizards your first listen of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On NBA podcast. There is no offseason in the NBA, <laughs> let me tell you. And Locked On NBA provides daily basketball analysis for national and local experts in 30 minutes or less. No one keeps you as informed and entertained as Locked On NBA, available on YouTube or whatever or wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. So let's get back into it. Everybody, like I said, uh, I have some articles to talk about, uh, some, some, some uh, few news uh, and the insight of what um, scouts – what their opinion is of Cooper Flag and who do they believe is going to be a kind of a threat to the number one pick to Cooper Flag in the 2025 NBA draft? So this is an article by Kevin McCormick um at Sports Skeeter. Ooh, that's an interesting name. Um, and um it says Cooper Flag stock undermined as anonymous ex-NBA executive compares his ceiling to Russian legend. I presume they're talking about AK 47 himself, Andre Kirilenko. Shooting stroke doesn't look Great. So um, real quickly, it says, in a recent 2025 mock draft, scouts and executives executives who uh, shared their thoughts on Cooper Flag. They compared him to longtime NBA forward Andre Kirilenko and touched on how his jump shot is a key area of improvement. So we're going to look at another article real quick that talks about um, NBA executives believe Ace Bailey could pass Cooper Flag as number one pick in a 2025 NBA draft. And in fact, the, the executive told Hoops Hype that he or she could see Ace Bailey, who is set to be a freshman at Rutgers University this season, sup, uh, supplanting flag for the number one spot. Let's, so let's tuck into this, y'all. Obviously, a lot of us um, in Wizards land, Wizards fan, um, the fan base, a lot of us are what? And I don't want to say us because I'm not really – I like Cooper Flag. I think he very well could be a generational talent. I think he's in a, he's in a draft that you're going to have more starting ready players, right? Um, but I don't think it's Cooper Flag a bust. I think that Ace Bailey – there's other guys in this draft, you know, Harper. I mean, Trey John. I mean, there's a lot of guys who could be dif- difference makers for the Washington Wizards. And it really, and here's another dynamic to look at real quick. Alex Sar wants to be a power forward. Now, we we saw, <laughs> right, in the summer league, he's not ready to play center, man. You know, he's not ready to be that center of the future. Could it be Tristan Vucevic? We'll see. You know, Marvin Bagley III is the expiring contract. And Rashawn Holmes is not part of the future. He is a tradable veteran who's here to mentor till it's time to pack his bag. So, you know, center position, could that be more prioritized in the coming drafts? Yes. But I think 2025, you look at the top 10, you par, you prioritize other positions, maybe power forward. But like I said, Alex R, he seems to be, you know, a lot of people are down on him and things, but, but I think he still, he seems to be the future power forward for the Washington Wizards. So what positions you look at? You know, I mean, you know, you got Jordan Poole, at least for the next three years. You know, if he's part of the future, even more, because he'll be getting to his prime. And like I said, I'm going to get into it later this week about Jordan Poole, why I'm going to convince you guys he could be part of the long-term future because by the time these rookies try to get re-signed, you know, he's going to be going to his prime. And if he's going to have the year that I think he's going to have this year, you know, he very well could be the future. But another subject for another day this week, y'all. Um, So, you know, Cooper Flag a bus. You know, Alex Sarr could be the future at the four. Now, you know, we'll see if Cooper Flag can project at the three. I don't know. Um, You know, but... Right now, it looks like power forward is in the long-term hands of Alex R. So, you know, look, Ace Bailey is a prospect. He's a player who could be, definitely help this team be a contender down the road. He's a, he's a, I believe he's a, has a high ceiling, a high floor. I think he's a guy who could definitely, definitely come in here and be a difference maker long-term. Now, you know, what, what is the future, you know, backcourt? And again, we're going to talk about that. Like I said, I'm, I'm excited to talk about that because, you know, there's a few people around the league who could believe that, you know, Jordan Poole and Bob Carrington could be in the same backcourt. Now, Again, another subject for another day. So I think that you prioritize another position. Maybe you go out there and get a win. You know, we'll see. Um, obviously, as you guys know, we'll dig deep into next year's draft when it's time for that. But um, I think that you prioritize other positions. You know, you don't make it to where, you know, scuba flag a bus. Yeah, I, I think you, you the top 10 is filled with plenty of guys who can be difference makers who could definitely be 
you know, part of the future here in DC. And I and I don't want to make it like if we don't get Cooper Flag, that we fail. Because I think, yes, Cooper Flag is definitely a guy you strongly consider in the top five, if not the number one overall pick. You know, he's definitely gonna be that guy number one. But again, you know, you're looking at Ace Bailey and other guys who could definitely give him a run for his money for the number one overall pick. So, you know, you guys again, let me down uh down below. What do you guys think? Do you think that we prioritize other positions? Do you think that Alex R is a long-term fit at Final Four? Because I do. I think that, yes, people are loaning him. He's becoming a punch bag right now. A few media sources in sports world, um, you know, are bagging on him, calling him a bust. But I believe it's too early in the game to call him a bust. It's five summer league games. He's got training camp. He's got a preseason. We don't know. They very well could start him. So those are questions because, obviously, where do you find that balance between the veterans and, the, and these young guys like Bilal, do you start Bilal? You know, do you put Kyle Kuzma at the four? You know, it's very intriguing to see. And like I said, um, I'm very, very excited to see when they finally announce the, the time for media day because I want to get down there. These are questions that I definitely want to ask these guys, and these are definitely answers that I want to convey to you guys. Because uh, what is the vision for the starting five? I think a lot of us want to know because me, I think Kyle Kuzma could be a wing, but, you know, obviously he's been at power forward long term for the Wizards. So, you know, do you prioritize other positions? I think you have to. I think you definitely look at – best player available you know because right now you you know at least for the next three years again you have jordan Poole, but karen's is part of it. keyshawn george what is his long drive he's the guy who could potentially be at the wing right uh you know so there's a lot of you know a lot of possibilities with the wizards going forward because eventually we are going to get younger and younger and younger and you know we're going to start to trade a lot of these veterans off you know and once we are satisfied with the mentorship like i said i do believe that Jonas valentino is good for a player like alex R. but you know we got to see what dominoes fall to see what division is going to the draft because these next two drafts are very important because after these next couple of drafts, you want to see significant progress, especially from Bilal Kulabali, especially from Alex. So you have to see something after these next couple of seasons. So power forward, you guys let me know what you guys think because in power forward, I think long-term is held down by Alex R. Now, do I go center in 2025? I don't, I don't, that's not my first position to need. You know, you know, you have Rashawn Holmes. I mean, obviously, he's not a long term piece. You have Tristan Vucevic. Definitely want to see what he can do. Um, but 2025 is, a, in my opinion, is the positions that you know, two guard and three at the wing, there are good prospects. So I think that we definitely have to prioritize that. Um, so like I said, you guys definitely let me know because I don't think it's Cooper Flag a bus. I think there are other prospects, and I think the Ace Bailey, like you said, I think he's definitely going to give him a, a run for his money. Um, let's see. This is also another quote I'm looking at right real quick. Uh, an NBA executive told Hoops Hype, I think Bailey is more talented with the ball than Flag at this point. I think Flag is overall, he's better overall player than Bailey now. He's just more of a scoring type of player. His overall decision making and shot selection has to get a lot better. He's very wired to score. Athletically, I think there's another level he can get to. Shooting wise, I think he's more of a scorer than a natural shooter. So, I mean, uh, and, and he goes on to say, I thought the same things about Brandon Miller when he was when he was in high school. So, and Brandon Miller is not a, a bad guy to compare to. Uh, so that, you guys let me know. I think that Ace Belly could definitely make the team better long term. So to me right now, I know it's early. I get it. I'm going to get on me about that. I know it's early to talk about 2025. But like I said, you know, let's talk. You know, definitely a good conversation to have uh, looking forward a little bit. So uh, we're going to look at Bilal real quick and see how he's doing uh, with the Olympics. And then I'm going to give you guys uh, a view of what to expect this week and what the schedule is going to look like. Because actually uh, the, the, the number of episodes per month actually went down. So I'm going to go and break that down for you guys, and, and so you guys know what to expect from me going forward this month. But before we do, hold on a second, a little longer. Okay, uh, but, but before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by Game Time. So you guys know, look, I'm a sports fanatic, man. I go to games all the time. I'm uh, next game I'm going to is uh, on the 31st of this month, the Cubs at the Nationals. It's probably gonna be my last Nationals game of the season, man. And I'm, I'm moving, so it's probably gonna be, gonna be my last Nationals game overall. But, um. But look, Game Time, as opposed to other ticket apps, and I'm not going to name drop nobody, but Game Time to me is the best one out of the bunch. And there's three reasons why. Well, number one, last minute deals. You can save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets, not only for sports events, but for concerts also, comedy shows, theater events, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? What else? All in pricing. This feature shows a total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. And what else do I like? Well, seat views. You get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. So you'll end up behind a beam or having to view something in your way, man. So you definitely get the best view for your money at a great deal. So look, all you have to do is take the guess we're going to buy MLB tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use promo code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase and terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNBA, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, 
NBA for twenty dollar off. Twenty dollars off. <laughs> download the game time. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, guys, we're gonna pull up. A, um, we're gonna take a look at Bilal real quick, um, and then we're gonna. I'm um, like I said, I'm gonna give you guys uh, the four one one on what to expect uh, this month because the episodes actually did get, go down. So to see everybody, obviously uh, they did lose against. Uh, let me pull it up the, the box score. My bad, y'all. Um, let's see. Uh, looking at the uh, game against Germany. Uh, okay, uh, it just give me a hard time for some reason. But looking at the Olympics, they did lose to Germany, eighty-five to seventy-one. So I'm going to try to pull up the stat line for. Um, it is give me fits nice. So let's let, let say this. Um, you know, Bilal, You know what? What? What can you really see? What part of his game? Do you see translating from his experience in the Olympics to, for, to the Washington Wizards tenure this season coming up? And I, I think the defense, kind of like Alex Sarr, is going to be the first thing that you're going to see him excel in. Now, obviously, you want to see some progress from his three-point shot. Ball handling, you definitely want to see him bring the ball down lower. You know, had a high dribble, definitely work on his ball handling. But I think that, you know, I, you know, I wasn't an always a big fan of um, players going over, play, you know, play overseas. But after watching FIBA, after watching the Olympics, I love the I love the competition and I love the pride in, in in countries. Like I said, you know this podcast this podcast and you know the the Lockdown Podcast Network overall, we get a lot of international fans and I think that and I love the diversity of the NBA. So you know I love the competition, man. You know you get and they're they're definitely having some really good games, man. Uh, you know you see teams like South Sudan really really playing hard. You know obviously Team USA being that team and you know but they're not the most dominant team again. You know what I mean you see a lot of talent internationally so um looking at Bilal um like I said I'm gonna pull up the, the stat line and I'll probably talk about it Wednesday um but looking at Bilal what am I really expecting him to translate in his defense I'm gonna see him you know he was already a dog I want to see more dog with a de defensive hand man because defensively he's already shown that he could be a future all defensive team guy in my opinion and the offensive side is definitely where you want to see him improve in progress um because this year of all players you know obviously Tristan Vucevic but he came late in the game last year but of all people of all the young players outside of Corey Kispert, obviously, and Johnny Davis, of the new regime, of all the new players, Black Kulabali is that one guy that you want to see some progression from, especially from a three-point shot. Maybe he develops a mid-range shot. Um, definitely want to see him do some counter moves, but he's shown the ability to attack the basket. To attack the basket with some athleticism, putting people on poster. I mean, the guy defensively looks like he's going to be the real deal on the defensive side of the ball. We just need him to show that the offense. I think that the experience in the Olympics is going to really do a lot for the evolution and the progression of his game. So um, I think that, you know, obviously the defensive side, you definitely want to see him continue, um, show some consistency to being that dog defensively. But offensively, I don't want to see a more polished shot. I definitely want to see him be more of an offensive threat this year. And like I said, this week, we're going to kind of touch on what, are, you know, do I see Bilal or Alex or, or, you know, both of them being starting caliber players? Absolutely. But, you know, you know obviously it's subject to dominoes falling, you know, further moves. And so we're definitely going to look at um, this month. We're going to look at, what, what are the different lineups we can look at? What, what is what starting five could we see, um, you know, opening night? What is the starting five? So we're gonna take a look at that. So all right, everybody. Um, I'm gonna give you guys an itinerary for uh, the rest of the week. Um, so this obviously things are slow right now. Um, this is um right now instead of having videos drop every night of the week, um, our quota went down to three, um, three. My bad, y'all. It's been a long day. I just got home from um, the vacation. Um. Three episodes a week so you know definitely um, i'm looking at a schedule of monday wednesday it's um, and friday i'm gonna drop videos this month and next month around september 16th we go back to every day of the week so right now you know obviously things are a little slower right now and nba land now you know you know if major moves happen any any you know free agent acquisition any trade i will obviously be doing live videos and you know putting that news out to you guys but right now we're looking at probably three days a week and it's going to pick up around september 16th when we get closer to the training camp preseason and look when we get close to you know the nba season you guys know after every game we go live and after every major news we go live especially at the deadline you know so you guys know what to expect so that is our itinerary going forward our next video will be wednesday night so um uh expect videos monday night wednesday night and friday night and we're going to still do live topics on friday night you know to try to still chop it up and keep things interesting during the slow time between the draft and free agency and training camp so you know it's definitely that quiet time and obviously football season's coming up so for you football fans man definitely definitely looking forward to football season sorry man but i'm looking forward to the season with the wizards look i think that they could win five ten more games and they're going to be they're going to be exciting to watch now obviously we're not going to be very good we're looking at the top five pick 
but I think they're going to see some you know, exciting basketball to a certain degree. So obviously I will see you guys Wednesday night. Now I'm real quick before we roll. Thank you for making Locked On Wizards your first listen today. Now, please go check out Locked On NBA podcast where the season never ends providing national expertise with a local perspective. You find a link to Locked On NBA in the description so you don't need to search. All right. So part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day, y'all. So, all right. Appreciate y'all. Oh, real quick. Um, before I go, real quick. Um, also, for the next couple of weeks, um, this was a request from a viewer off of YouTube. Mm, excuse me. Uh, this is at Cowboys Wizard. And I asked you guys what you guys wanted me to cover. So uh, the week after next, uh, this was a request by at Cowboys Wizard on YouTube. So definitely appreciate you. And they said, please do some in-depth look player by player on how Coach Keith will potentially use them in his system this upcoming season and what the role will be for the rookies and reserves. It will be short, a, a bit shorter, and you can guess if they will make the roster or not. So I'll definitely cover that next week. Definitely appreciate um, you putting out there what you want me to cover, so I'll definitely knock that out next week. So, again, appreciate you guys, man. It's good to be back. So um, I will see you guys Wednesday night. Hail to the Wizards, and peace. See you guys next time. Have a good night.